So Maria, we're at Rain and Marshes. Yeah, so I don't live very far from here. And this is the place that I come to a lot. So um, I made it easy for myself. <laughs> inviting you here. <laughs> well, you're also seven and a half months pregnant. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it helps to be close by. This whole place was a repurposed oh, um, military okay. shooting range. Shooting range, okay. It has a weird connection to Cyprus for me because... It has a connection to Cyprus? Yeah, because of the British military. Because oh, yeah, of course, yeah, they've got British military, got bases. Well, they still have bases. Yeah, yeah, there's still bases. In Cyprus. Very kind of weirdly, where the military goes, the place doesn't get developed, at least not in the same way. Like, we're surrounded by so many yeah. warehouses and... Why has this land been left? I think it does have to do with it having been military. Very soon after I was here, I discovered this place and uh, started coming here and then I wanted to make a film about it. And yeah, I just found like this, the, the, the practice of bird watching to be very similar to filming. For me, the bird watchers just having an observation in the moment. A lot of people use binoculars, so they kind of let go of the impulse to document. So the film I made here, the name of it is the phonetic pronunciation of the lapwing song. So it's called Clip to It, Clip, Clip to It. There's a lapwing there. Yeah. Oh, wow. OK, yeah, it it's flies in a very it. inefficient way. I can see it's like a punk bird. It's yeah. probably taken some amphetamine. That's why it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's flying in a slightly peculiar way. It doesn't follow the rules of the, of the other birds. Moving here into this part of Essex from London, it was a bit of a shock of moving from urban space and kind of moving to the outskirts of that. Not quite countryside, somewhere in between. Uh, like an edge land of sorts. Yeah, edge land, yeah, Even the in between I'd... places. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're the most interesting spots, aren't they? The, ed the edges, like you're saying, the in between spaces. John yeah. Berger calls them the drosscapes. And I just like all the contradictions of it, just how it feels like it's been rewielded in such a successful, in my eyes, like just a really beautiful way. But it's, you're still aware of it, and it's quite nice that there's all these elements of it. Yeah, you, you can, can still see. hear the highway and see it, the trains passing, the planes. And then when there is a big boat passing, sometimes you can just see the top of it. Being away from a city, it just made me think of coming to the UK and immigration in a different way. So I think in the city, there's kind of just more maybe coherent kind of ways that people engage with the different um, migrant communities, whereas I, I felt like a bit more sort of out of touch maybe around here and I just wondered like how other um, migrant people have experienced living here. And then um, the story of migration that relates directly to the river and oh, to, to Tilbury, Tilbury and specifically Windrush, and Windrush um, and the way that those kind of stories also relate to the, the history of empire as well. I was very interested in. So yeah, with all those different things in mind, I made a film in Tilbury working with um, just different groups of people that sort of somehow are not necessarily connected, but they they are brought to, the, to that place with from different circumstances. And a lot of the Brexit debate having been about immigration and xenophobia, it was just a way of me to process that. Then specifically looking at how the experience of living in a port town like Tilbury affects that experience of um, sense of displacement maybe that I was kind of experiencing myself. Yeah, yeah. And like, just, just my question was like, how are others experiencing it? 